guys um so today i'm going to be talking to you about this i wore this halloween um it took me ages to make purely because i'm a bit of a procrastinator um but i'm going to tell you what you need to make one of these and how easy it is and some things that you might find a bit difficult which I found difficult because I don't sew. Um, there are going to be a couple of links below to ones that do sew so if you're into sewing they're probably a really good one for you but if you don't sew I've got a little cheap way of doing this one okay so here we go. Okay, so let's start. The first thing you need to do is you need to get um, a measurement for how long you want your, your tail to be. So this is one I've just briefly made up really quickly just to show you. Um, what I'm using is this. Um, a lot of places on YouTube, I think especially American ones, they say you have to go and get yarn. It's basically wool. Um, but the best one to use is anything that's made out of 100% acrylic. So if you've got it with the acrylic, that's the best thing because you are going to be using heat on it. Alright, so anything with 100% acrylic is really the best thing to get. So get the choices of colours that you want. I've got basically, um, I've basically gone for grey for a spine. What I would suggest is actually using the tail end colour that you want as your spine. So if you're going to have black at the end of your tail, or white or pink or whatever, do the spine in that colour as well because when you fluff out the base, you don't have to then sew anything on to cover that base area. So go with the main colour of your spine for whatever the tail tip's going to be. Once you've done your spine and you've actually got the length that you want, you need to plait it like this. Again, once it's plaited, you can then sew onto it directly, or you can do the technique I'm going to show you. At the top, you can just tie it off like this, or you can do a loop like this. So if you want to do a loop, you'll need to do your strands, bring them around, and then plait it that way, leaving a loop at the top. Again, there's a link below to another YouTuber who's actually done that. So if you're not sure about what I'm saying, just go there and you can find it. So once you've done this, get some elastic as well. Put the elastic through the top. Little bit of sewing needs to be done here. And all you have to do is sew the ends together to however big you want the loop to be. Okay, if you don't put elastic on it, you will risk all of the wool spine stretching and over time it could actually just snap or become longer than what you really want it to be. So always put elastic at the top. Anything like a belt you then put through, this will not get worn. Okay, so you won't break it. Elastic is definitely something you need to put through here. So when you go to start, once you've got your spine, put that to one side. You will then need to take your wool colour of choice. So I'm going to use white. The next thing you have to do is measure out the length of strands you want. Now I was quite sneaky. I actually used one of these. Good old Argos. As you can see, there's a mark there. I will be telling you about that in a little bit too. So I literally just had my Argos book, put it there. Get your scissors, cut it. And for me, that was actually the perfect length. Just happened to be right. So what I then did is I did about 10 of these plus an 11th one. You can do as many strands as you want. The more strands you do, the thicker they will be. And I quite like them really thick. I noticed with the white wool, I had to do at least 20 plus one. Um, to make them really thick because when they get hot they do flatten quite a lot. 
So once you've done however many of these you want, you tie them together and you need to try and get the knot right in the middle if you can, like this. And the reason that you do however many strands plus one is because that is going to be your tying strand. So just fan it out, take two of the strands, give them a bit of a pull to just lengthen them. And then this is when you need your brush. Now, if you've got a dog or a cat already, fantastic. If not, you'll need to buy one of these brushes. Do not use a hairbrush. It just won't have the strength in it to drag through the wool. So you can do this in however many ways you want. You can do one side then the other. You can do it in one go. The basics is to just strand it all out. Okay, so you need to make it as fluffy as possible and get all of the strands out. Right, so what you need to do is even the, the top section here where it's still braided, you still need to get that bit out as well. So you just need to tease it through with the brush to get rid of it. You want every single bit unwoven, obviously avoiding the knot in the middle. So once you've done that, clear your brush out. I can't stress this enough. This is what comes out of this. And that's just one fluff that's done. So this all needs to come out. You will need carrier bags. I have got three carrier bags full of this stuff. It's, it's ridiculous. And that's, like I said, out of one fluff. So you can imagine how many carrier bags full you will have afterwards. So get rid of that. The next thing to do, ideally, is to just keep making hundreds of these. I have literally gone through two of these in white, two of these in black, and I think two or three of these in grey, just because of the length of my tail. You won't obviously go through as many as that, but you will need to buy quite a few just in case. And just keep making fluffs. Don't do anything else until you've made what you think is probably enough. What you do next is you take hair straighteners. Now, they do say on some YouTube videos, don't go above a certain heat or anything like that. If you heat this up, it won't damage it. It makes it go very shiny. It doesn't have the fluffy appearance that it has right now. Um, it makes it nice and smooth. It makes it look a little bit more realistic. If you like it like this, you, you can skip this next part. It's entirely up to you. But it does help if you do flat iron it. Now, any sort of hair straighteners will do. Don't worry about temperatures or anything, just pop it on through. So just push it through like this. It won't catch fire or anything crazy. You're just trying to get all the wrinkly bits out. Now you've got to be careful as well that when you've put heat through it, if you do that, it will actually bend and you'll get a crease in it. So pop it down flat, switch those off. Pick up your brush again and just give it a quick little brush out. And there is quite a difference. So all the fibres have now been flattened and they're a lot smoother and they're really shiny looking. So that's one fluff done. Now you have to do that with every single fluff you have. And once you've made enough, you then bring the spine back in, making sure you've still got these top two. And then this is the easy bit. You place it just above the knot that you've made on the spine. And then you just tie it on the opposite side. Tie it quite tightly 
on that side. Flip it back over to where your fluff is. Push your fluff up. Do this every time. As you layer them up, you, you need to push it up. Get your two strands again. And then tie another knot of it underneath the knot of the fluff. And you can tie it as many times as you want. I literally do it twice underneath the knot. So then I know it's definitely secure. And then with your scissors again, you literally just cut off as close as you can to the knot. And then you can bring that one back down. So the reason I said to do the spine in the colour of the tail tip is because if you've got a white tail tip, once you've gone all the way around and then you start going up and up and up, this will show through still a little bit. So it's going to be a little bit obvious that it that just doesn't look right. So really, this should have been white, if that makes sense. And then it's a little less hassle for you to do. Or else, if you don't do it in that colour, you have to do what I force myself to do, which is this. <laughs> and this sewing thing, I don't do. I did it, and it wasn't very good, but it, it does look okay. Again, link below to a girl that actually sews them all on and um, she can help you with that because I'm, I'm not going to show you that, I'm really bad at it. So I actually sewed mine on and it's in here somewhere. There's literally, I literally just did about 10 fluffs on the end, sewn on. And as you can see, there's like, <laughs> there's like bits of sewing stuff kind of like everywhere. It doesn't make much sense. They do hold on, but it's it's like really messy. I just did it to cover <laughs> the end so you couldn't see the grey. Another option that you can do, and you can do it at the start if you want to, is metal. Now, I went for a snow leopard tail, which naturally just, they, they kink up at the end. So to do that, I went and bought some wire. Now this is actually wire used for, um, I think it's floral arrangements. I picked it up in Hobbycraft. It wasn't a lot of money, I think it was like two pounds or something. And you literally get all of this wire. So if you are doing a really long tail or you're making more than one and you wanna have some, um, some structure to it, get some of this wire. And all I did with my one is I literally pushed it through Pushed it right through into this bit here. And then I made it go through this whole section here, which is also why I have pliers, because mine was about this long, snipped it off, and then this bit was free. So this bit here then, you can actually bend up and you can give it a little bit more of an interesting look, should you wish to. But the wire is optional. A lot of people don't use wire on the tail, but because of the length of mine, I just didn't want it to drag on the floor, so I had it so it scooped up at the back. And also, snow leopard's tails do do that, so if you want to get a picture of the tail that you're doing, that's a good idea. So, once you've done all your fluffs, apply them using that technique there. Go all the way up until you reach the very top, and then you should have something that resembles this great big fluffy thing. That's it. If you've got any questions, um, just leave a comment below. Um, I'll try and get back to you on it. But that's pretty much how you, how you do one. Um, and if you're curious as to where I bought anything, then again, just ask me. Um, those of you who know me, you can obviously just ask me on Facebook or message me or whatever. Um, and yeah, hopefully this made some kind of sense.